Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. What if the weekend does to another bright new day with all its opportunities for pleasing Him? So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Be not dismayed, whatever be time, God will take care of you. His wings of love abide, God will take care of you, God will take care of you, through every day or all the way, He will take care. of toil when heart doth fail God will take care of you when dangers fierce your path assail God will take care of you God will take care
Our morning prayer begins with our opening sentence on page 32 and then continues on page 35 and following. Let me hear of your love and kindness in the morning, for I put my trust in you. Show me the road that I must walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We continue in prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilati. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his love and mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to this point where we Make ourselves right with God. We bring before God those things of which our consciences are afraid and we ask for God's forgiveness. And so we pray together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we come to our Psalms appointed for this morning. And our Psalms are Psalms 40 and 54. So we turn to Psalm, the first Psalm, which begins on page 519. And then we continue right away thereafter with Psalm 54, which begins on page 536. So we begin with Psalm 540 on page 519. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my foot in show. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering, you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the rule of the book it is written concerning me, I love to do your will. O my God, your law is deep in my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. 
I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For innumerable troubles have crowded upon me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more in number than the hairs of my head and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them draw back and be disgraced who take pleasure in my misfortune. Let those who say aha and gloat over me be confounded because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation continually say, Great is the Lord. Though I am poor and afflicted, the Lord will have regard for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. Do not tarry, O my God. We continue with Psalm 54, page 536. Save me, O God, by your name. In your might, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free will sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We now come to our first reading, which is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. To draw near to listen is better than the sacrifice offered by fools, for they do not know how to keep from doing evil. Never be rash with your mouth nor let your heart be quick to utter a word before God. For God is in heaven, and you upon earth. Therefore, let your words be few. For dreams come with many cares, and a fool's voice with many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay fulfilling it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not fulfill it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. And do not say before the messenger that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry at your words and destroy the work of your hands? With many dreams come vanities and a multitude of words. But fear God. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. We turn to page 552 for the canticle, Jesus Saviour. Jesus Saviour of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free. We look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains. Forgive the sins of all your people. Make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer. Save and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Christ Jesus. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share the life of your kingdom. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Now we come to a second reading from the Gospel of Matthew, 
And we read in chapter 14, verses 22 to 36. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But this time, but by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land. For the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Genesaret. After the people of that place recognized him, they sent word throughout the region and brought all who were sick to him and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. This is the end of the reading. Thanks be to God. Let us reflect now on this passage that we just read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 36. And where we, at this time, Jesus, as we read last time, has just finished the feeding of the 5,000. And we knew that this took place late in the afternoon. So where we, at the moment, is that Jesus, at the end of that time of feeding the 5,000, he sent his disciples over to the other side of the lake where he intended to continue his ministry, and Jesus, in a boat on the lake, and Jesus con continued his usual practice of going to the Father. It's been a long day for him, and Jesus needs the refreshment, the refilling. The Lord of us, in fact, need. We need to return to the very source of who we are, the source of all that we are, which is God the Father. So Jesus' practice, as we see in the scriptures, is always to put aside that time for rest and refreshment and being with the Father to be refilled, as it were. And so we are told that the disciples are on the lake. There's been a strong adverse wind and they haven't been make, making much progress. They're actually in trouble in terms of their, their trip. They haven't gone very far. And Jesus is praying and it has gotten dark. It is going into the night and we are told now very early in the morning very early in the morning, Jesus is going to look for his disciples. And he walks in the water very casually. Jesus walks in the water, realizing he could see them not far out from the shore. Jesus walks towards them on the water. And Peter and others are, are looking out, no doubt, and they see this figure walking on the water. And the first reaction, of course, 
is one of fear. They were terrified. You know, it's a ghost, they said. Of course, with these hardened fishermen, you will want to know, well, you know, what's going on. But of course, superstition was alive and well even in those days. So, they're filled with fear. These hardened fishermen, you know, are filled with fear. It's a ghost, they said, and they're cowering in the boat. But Jesus, recognizing their fear, is reassuring. Take heart, he says to them. It is I. There's no need for you to be afraid. Do not be afraid. And while we would, you know, look at his disciples that are sitting among the <laughs> division, big, hard, black men we see in Trinidad, you know. But of course, there's a larger point here for us. And in, indeed, all of us, for one reason or another, at various times, uh, we are afraid. We are afraid of situations. Things are happening in our lives and we want to know what's going on, you know. And sometimes we are superstitious too. We, we think it's some, somebody has done us something. We, we you know, we, we, we want to look for some superstitious reason. You know, maybe it's an enemy who has put a, a spirit on us or something. You know, we too have these situations in our lives that we just don't understand. They didn't know who or what is that coming towards them. They assumed it was a ghost and they assumed the worst. And we too, in our situations, when things aren't going right, they aren't going the way we want for some reason. We, we invoke various ghosts as well. <laughs> various reasons, you know, superstition, comes very often to the fore. For some, it's really just below the surface. But for us Christians, Jesus, the Son of God, is Lord of all. And by his power, we will overcome every trial. So in our circumstances of need and fear and hopelessness, we turn to Jesus. We invoke Jesus. Nothing else. No one else. We invoke Jesus. The one who, by his love, by his power, is able to do all things when we call on him in faith. So we continue in this journey of the disciples as Jesus appeared to them. Peter now seeing Jesus walking on the water, he, of course, wants to do that too. He said, I want to be able to do that too. So Peter, in his usual impetuous way, said, Lord, if it is you, com command me to come to you on the water. He wants to do what Jesus is able to do. And so what does Jesus do? Jesus says to him, well, just come. And Peter, of course, I think without thinking, just makes that walk of faith, unconscious faith, we might say, just steps out and finds himself walking on the water. And as he begins to walk on the water in the midst of all these waves, he suddenly realizes, I am walking on this water and these are waves all around that can envelop me and, and engulf me. And now again, fear. We just spoke about fear. Fear takes over. He became frightened. And when fear takes over again, we are in trouble. Yes, fear overcomes Peter, even in the very presence of God. Jesus is right next to him. But in his fear, all is forgotten that the one with all that power, the very one who is walking on the water, who called him onto the water, he has forgotten all of that. And his fear is overwhelming him. And of course, he begins to sink. And then in his, you know, in his desperation, he suddenly realizes, but here, Jesus is right here. And so he cries out, Lord, save me. And that ought to be our cry to in our time when life seems to be too much for us. Our circumstances are engulfing us and overcoming us. We are about to sink. Jesus is there for us to call upon. And Peter cries out, Lord, save me. And of course, that's a cry of faith because 
Peter realizes that yes, Jesus is able to save him. If he puts his faith and trust in him, then Jesus can save him. And so that's a cry of desperation, yes, but it's also a cry of faith, understanding that he, here is the one. We have to recognize there is the one who's, who's able. He's right next to me. I, can, I just need to call out to him. For us too, we may not see him, but Jesus is right, very present with us. And we need in our circumstances to let go of fear and let faith take over. He cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith. Yes, Jesus is disappointed after all Peter's experiences with him. But Jesus, nevertheless, will respond. He might be disappointed, yes, but he will never, never leave us or forsake us or argue Oh, oh, you of little faith, I'm not going to respond. He may say, he may say oh, you of little faith. And we may need that rebuke. But Jesus will not leave us to sink, to let circumstances engulf us and, you know, leave us broken and battered. And, you know, Jesus will reach out and lift us above our circumstances. And that faith, therefore, is what we are called upon. Very much faith. You of little faith, why did you doubt? And so for us, we pray for that gift of faith. So that we, in our times of need, will have no doubt about who we turn to and to, you know, to whom do we turn. And when others are in their circumstances, we'll have no doubt as to who whom we will point them. It is the one who is there for us in all our circumstances. He's not like a friend who is only there when things are going well with us and abandons us in our time of need. Actually, in fact, it's usually quite the opposite. We tend to abandon him when things are going well with us and only turn to him in time of need. Of course, that's not the kind of person we want to be. We want to be faithful, ever faithful in all our circumstances. In the good times, we give him thanks and praise for his goodness and love. In the bad times, we look to him for our help and strength and courage to overcome. He is ever present with us in the good times and in the bad times. You have little faith. It is that faith that that Jesus is able to work on. Even a mustard seed of faith is able to and he's able to do all kinds of things through us, even if there's only a mustard seed of faith in us. So we pray for that faith. That ought to be our concern. That we will grow as we learn more and more, as we read more and more of these kinds of circumstances that we reflect more and more on this God who sent his son, his very son, to represent him in the world, to give us life for us, as we understand God's love that we and God's power, which can be at work in our lives to overcome all situations, our own, as well as to assist others. You know, as we come to understand, you know, the, the, the great force we can be for good and for God in this world. We pray that God would strengthen us all in our faith that in all circumstances we will, that faith in us will shine forth and be a source of help and encouragement to others, not only ourselves, but to others as well. And it turns out, of course, that these disciples who in, in that experience over that night caught in the boat, little wind stuck somewhere in the lake, seeing Jesus walking on the water, seeing Jesus calming the waves, you know, seeing Jesus rescuing Peter. That experience, the whole experience, was brought them to a certain point, a culmination, we might say. 
point where they can only imagine them shaking their heads and saying, truly, truly, you are the Son of God. In all the experiences, this has capped this experience on the lake, has capped it all. A capstone experience. And they have come to this realization. This epiphany. Truly, you are the Son of God. And may we all, all of us, yes, we are on a journey of faith. And may God bless us all with that sort of capstone experience. That we will certainly come to that point where we are able to say like these disciples, truly, talking about Jesus, truly, in our experience of him in our lives, we will be able to say, truly, you are the Son of God. The Lord be with you. We continue with the Apostles' Creed on page 42 of our Books of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now we turn to page 173 for our collect, the collect for proper four. Let us pray. Lord God of the nations, you have revealed your will to all people and promised us your saving help. May we hear and do what you command, that the darkness may be overcome by the power of your light. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we continue in prayer. As we turn to page 45, Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Continue in prayer. O oh God, our Father, you've bidden light to shine out of darkness and have awakened us again to praise your goodness and to seek your grace. Make us children of the light and of the day, that our lives being open to your glory, we may shine as lights in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue in prayer on page 46. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we reaching forth our hands in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And we continue to pray for God's world and for people in every part of that world. And we pray especially for those we are living under conditions of danger and loss of life and destruction. We pray for those places where there is war in Ukraine, that war between Russia and Ukraine. In the Middle East, that war between Israel and, and Hamas. 
in all other countries where there is internal strife as well. Father, we pray that you touch hearts and minds of those who are intent on waging war. Touch hearts and minds and fill them with your love for peace. We pray for those who pursue peace to have ascendancy so that our world may be a place where people can live in their lives in peace and seeking, Lord, only to come to know you and to serve you. We continue to pray for your church worldwide. For all who are ministers of your word and sacraments, that they will be inspired, Lord, in the work they do. We pray for, especially for our Anglican communion worldwide. For the Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury. For all the primates of our various provinces in our communion, and especially in the church in the province of the West Indies, our church, we pray for Howard, our Archbishop, who is also Bishop of Jamaica. May your hand of power and wisdom be upon him as he leads this province and his own diocese. We pray for all the bishops of our several dioceses in this church and the province of the West Indies. We ask your hand upon them of wisdom and grace and love. And we lift up especially our own bishop, the Right Reverend Claude Berkeley, Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago. We ask you to bless his family and loved ones. May your hand of, of guidance and inspiration be upon him as he leads our church. We pray for all our clergy in all our provinces, all our parishes, in our diocese. We pray for your guidance and inspiration, Lord, as we seek to lead your people into that knowledge and love of you and into your service. We pray for our country of Trinidad and Tobago. For those you have put in authority over us, our president, our prime minister, members of parliament, ministers of government, all those in positions of authority and leadership who are expected, Lord, to bring solutions, bring help and hope to our people. We pray that you will inspire them and they'll be open, Lord, to your guidance and inspiration in all they do. We pray for people the people of our country, Lord, touch our hearts and minds, make us mindful of one another. Help us fill our hearts with that love for one another, Lord, that our country will be a place of peace, that we'll have a reduction in crime because we all reach out to one another and we reach out to help those who are in need. Pray for those who serve our country in the medical profession as they look after the sick, those who Seek to protect and serve, Lord, in our police service and the other service, armed services. We pray for those who teach our children in our schools, from kindergarten right up to university. Those who are in a position where they can influence in a positive way the lives of our young people, even as they pursue a secular education. We pray for parents in the homes of our land. Give them your wisdom, Lord, so that they will be able to discern the minds of their children and be able, with that wisdom, to help to nurture them in the way they ought to go. We pray for all those who are in need in our society today, those who mourn the loss of loved ones, those who have suffered the loss of other kinds, loss of property, loss of jobs, loss of family and friendships, our senior citizens who have lost some of their powers and need our help and assistance. We pray for them. We pray you open our eyes and our hearts so we'll be able to respond to their needs and to the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray the prayer of dedication on page 47. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks 
be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.